Okay. Um, the next thing we want to talk about is um, other issues having to do with the ethics of being a systems administrator. Uh, in particular, the uh, issues that come up. There are a lot of issues regarding privacy that comes up. There are also some legal issues. But um, let's just discuss a couple privacy issues. Actually, while we're here, well, I don't have any mail on my system, so I, I can't show you. But of course, if you would go down into your, um, let's become root here. Let's go down into our um, var area, var slash spool. There is, <coughs> there's generally a lot of valuable information down here. In particular, if you look under mail, I don't think I've got anything there, but you would find all the incoming and outgoing mail on a system that is running a mail server. Um, you might find outgoing. You would probably find a lot of incoming. And of course, in people's personal directories, you'll find incoming. You'll find someplace under uh, slash var slash spool, you'll find all the print files. Um, and they're just kept as normal PDFs or whatever. Um, in many cases, they're very easy to read. And um, so the question is, you know, users have their files on these systems. When are you allowed to read them? When do you regard that as private information? Uh, it would be nice just to say, these are private. You can't look at these things. OK, but that's not practical because sometimes in order to fix a system, you have to, um, you, you have to uh, look in the areas in, um, or in order to monitor what's going on. It's kind of my rule of thumb is that I should not look at files unless I have a job-related reason to look at these files, uh, in which case, um, it is assumed that I have the rights to look at the information in these files um, for job-related reasons and only for job-related reasons. Even then, sometimes you have to have a certain amount of discretion. It may be very legitimate that you are cruising through the files looking for an error or viruses that are being passed through the system or something, and you see some email that has private information about somebody's pay or um, should we fire Joe, um, um, you know, and um, you have to be quiet about that. Uh, you don't know about it. Um, on the other hand, if you come across um, information of an illegal nature, well, your obligations may be a little different or of an, or, or possibly information of a nature that, um, you know, somebody's doing something that their supervisor should know about. Um, um, well, you have to decide um, what to do about it. I, I, there's also a matter that, in my mind, that Sometimes you want to turn a blind eye to certain infractions if they're, um, um, unless they rise to a significant level. Um, that, um, you know, um, pornography is different than child pornography. Um, um, it, it, it's different if it's private than if it is part, than if it's used in a harassing way. Um, um, sometimes, you know, a little personal use of computer in some places is quite acceptable. Maybe technically not right, but not worthy of making a big deal of um, unless it is, you know, um, using a company's computer for the, uh, for people's own private business. <laughs> um, um, it, so in some cases, it depends on the level that this is done at, too. 
Um, it takes a lot of common sense and a lot of decisions and a lot of luck and I, I don't know. It's uh, Oh, as an example of something that happens is, you know, uh, at times people have called me in to look at a computer that isn't working, actually often, and maybe I end up, um, like a while back, um, I, a while back I can recall being called in to a system where the computers weren't working, something had happened, um, and they couldn't retrieve their email. And they had years and years of email there. And uh, they just wanted it recovered. It had a lot of important billing information. It had clients, uh, uh, contact information. It, it was very crucial information. Um, this was a very small business. You know, as I cruised down through the business, there were probably files that I would consider personal in nature, too, um, that, uh, uh, you know, there was, a, um, the company was ran by a single man that probably dates, and, 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 um, and so there were uh, files of a rather personal nature, and, um, you know, if this, uh, you're blind to those sort of things. Didn't happen. Don't know anything about it. Of course, this was entirely legal and um, actually proper, just personal. Um, so um, there's no question that that you know is not that it's not a big deal. It's not part of the job. But you do things like that do happen. The other thing is. Some of the rules about computers really depend on the culture, of the, the particular place you're working, the culture you're working in, the nation you're living in. Um, I have a friend, a gentleman by the name of Bilal Habash, who is actually in charge of, um, as I understand, he's in charge of the, uh, or was at least at one time, in charge of the uh, censorship information systems for, uh, I believe it was Abu Dhabi um, or someplace in the Middle East. And, you know, he believes in censorship and believes many things that most of us Americans do not believe in. And, you know, bad books and censored material might include things like um, the Bible. Um, and, you know, I guess so be it. It's, I'm saying, you know, um, ethical standards do vary a little bit depending on your culture, country and culture and things of that type, too. Um, and um, um, one would expect that probably a church's computers are ran a little bit differently than a, um, um, Drug deal? Well, I don't know. Then um, uh, um, distillers' computers. I don't know. Um, um, in terms of what they allow to happen on them and what type of information is kept on them, and what the privacy levels are and things of that type. Um, okay. Now the other thing is there are legal issues involving systems administration and running computers and stuff. If you work for a government, you really, really have to be aware of um, things like freedom of act, uh, freedom of information laws. That you, you need to be aware that you um, any public meeting becomes a public record. The minutes from those have to be kept forever. Uh, in many places, the um, every bit of email that is either received or sent is a public record that must be kept for certain periods of time. Sometimes forever is the period of time that, it, that is required. They also, by all rights, have to be kept in a relatively readable format. and. That actually brings up many, many technical issues that I won't go into, um, but um, but there are public records laws. There are um, many laws on, you know, 
being responsible for keeping your accounting data and your accounting records in good shape so they could be looked at by uh, the SEC if you're a corporation um, or the IRS or whoever. Um, there's recently Oregon passed a law that if you are a computer technician, which wasn't defined in the law as I understand, and um, and you um, were examining someone's computer and you should have had reason to believe that there was child pornography on the computer, you are obligated to report that to the local authorities under penalty of, I think it's a year in prison and I don't know what all. Um, but you know, how do you interpret such a law? Um, I, I presume that doesn't mean you're supposed to examine people's personal and private files for uh, uh, child pornography. Uh, that it merely means, well, I don't know what it means, but it's the law. Um, and that does bring up an issue. Sometimes you don't know what things mean, and it is the law. And that's where sometimes um, your employer does need to be willing to hire rather expensive corporate lawyers from time to time, because um, certainly I've had to hire lawyers to um, navigate me through some things at times, never having to do with systems administration, but um, but having to do with other issues. And even in lights of systems administration, I have been involved or um, I have been involved in some legal affairs. Um, in particular, at one time, I was called in to offer testimony because one party was suing another party. Um, and a lot of it had to do with the status of the computers involved because one party couldn't um, satisfy the contract by the deadline. There was a contract. One party couldn't satisfy the contract by the deadline date. The party that issued the contract was, say, was blaming the party that couldn't um, fulfill the contract, saying that they owed them a lot of money and you know they were bad people. The party that had that was given the contract was basically said, well, they never provided us the data and everything we needed in order to do our end of the contract, so we're, it, it, it's their fault, not ours. And I was kind of a neutral party that was called in to um, give testimony on the status of the computer systems and things of that type, which actually was not was was not fun to do. I really, really didn't like being in that when there's lawyers on that side of the room, there's lawyers on that side of the room, and um, everybody's got their lawyer except you. You're in the middle with no lawyer. And um, um, But hey, that was many years ago, and it, it was OK. Um, nerve wracking, but worked out just fine. Um, anyway. Issues like that do come up. Uh, there are many, many ethical issues that do come up as a systems administrator. I'm just going through this to make you aware of them. I certainly don't have the solutions to all of them. But, um, but you should be aware that if you want to do this as an occupation, you will have to deal with ethical issues on a relatively routine basis, although many of them are very easy to handle. Um, so with that, I'm going to end the video. And uh, thank you. Bye-bye.